We're looking at human learning. I'm Andy Johnson. This is part three, looking at perceptual organization. Our mind organizes the elements of the environment into objects. That term perceptual organization is the term used to denote that. We perceive or we perceptually organize the items that we see. These are just random black and white pictures, but our mind perceives and creates organization and all of a sudden we see a Dalmatian sniffing the ground. Gestalt is a term used for how the brain looks for overall patterns. The brain doesn't see the whole, doesn't replicate the whole, it sees the patterns and fills in the blanks. This happens quite a bit in reading. When we see the patterns here, we see either people walking down the stairs or we see another pattern arrows going up or down. Our brain, depending on what's in there, can organize, look for patterns, and create meaning. Perceiving with our eyes. Perception is more than sensation. The immediate environment doesn't give us all the information that we need to make sense of the world. We take in some sensory input and combine it with or combine it with the information that we already have. Now, Here's what's interesting. Our eyes do not maintain a steady gaze. Even if you're looking at here, your eyeballs do not stand straight out. We use the term saccades, the tiny skips the eyes make, the periodic snapshots that, that they make. The fixation is where your eyes stop. Now in reading, boop, our eyes go back and forth, boop, and these are the fixations. Boop, 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 boop. We actually stop or fixate on only from 40 to 60% of the words, that, that varies. Uh, usually 60% is the term that I've heard most often. If we are unfamiliar, we have more fixations. If we know it very, if it's at our independent level and below, it's, and we know the information, that will skim and fixate on hardly any words at all. We certainly do not process each individual letter when we read. We're looking at maybe just the first uh, uh, the first word in the letter at most. Foveal is uh, the size of a grape. Now, foveal is that clear part that, that you focus in on. It's about the size of the grape at arm's length. That's the only really clear part that you see. Uh, but the eye must constantly move to see a clear picture of reality, and that's why the eyeball is going all over. The foveal eight to 14 letters on either side. You see it, but it's kind of fuzzy. Peripheral is all else, and that's real fuzzy, all right? Foveal, parafoveal, and all else is peripheral. It's a picture of the foveal, the clear part, parafoveal, and all else. So to create a clear picture reality, your eye constantly scans the environment. Take a look at this picture, and notice where your eyeballs Go. Notice the path that your eyeballs take. Doot, 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 doot. And they actually put little things that can track the eyeballs pictures and most people's eyeballs go like that when they look at the picture. You don't have one constant gaze. Eyeballs never stay still. They create a picture of reality based on the little snapshots or the little fixations. And again, here's an example of some fixations. Mona Lisa, you can kind of imagine where your eyeballs go there. The Last Supper, what's interesting, all these lines going in kind of create uh, a pathway for our eyeballs to go back and forth this way and fixate on this center, center picture. And there's another image where our eyeballs travel and we look at that picture. Here's an interesting study. Take a look at this picture. Think about where your eyeballs may or may not go. They did a study looking at gender differences. One of these is a male fixation pattern, a bunch of males. The other is the female fixation pattern. Which do you think is the male? Which do you think is the female? I'll let you decide that. That is the end of human learning. Uh, part three, we'll be looking at attention in part four.